my name is Rowena. I'm originally from Perth, but for the last three years I've been fortunate enough to be the manager of Ernabella Arts. And I'm here this evening with three artists, as Anna said, I'm here with Imiari, Langaliki, and Umaji. So I'm just going to say a few words about the Art Centre and give you a bit of history, a bit of context for the art that you're seeing, and then I'm going to hand over to Umaji and she's going to say a few words. So, as Anna said, uh, Ernabella is kind of smack bang in the middle of the country. We're about two hours due south of Uluru. I'm sure most of us here are old enough to remember the land rights movement of the 1970s. Well, that was very strong in the central desert. And in 1980, the South Australian government handed back 100,000 square kilometres uh, of land way up in the kind of northwest of the state where it butts up with the NT and the SA borders. That land was handed back to the Ananu, who are the people, who speak the languages Pichinjara and Yankinjara, hence APY lands, not as some people might refer to it as the Appy lands, as though we're all out there having a big party because we're all so happy. So that's where the APY lands are and that's who they represent. There's about three and a half thousand people living across the lands in seven communities and a number of outstations and homelands. Ernabella is the biggest community and there are about 600 people living there. So Ernabella was the first place that was settled on the lands. There was a mission, uh, sorry, there was a sheep station there called Ernabella, that's how it got its name. Although Ananu referred to the place as Pukacha. So Pukacha, Ernabella, they're kind of interchangeable. So in the 1940s, the head surgeon at the Royal Adelaide Hospital was also a missionary who reveled in the name of Charles Duguid. I'm not kidding. <laughs> so Reverend or Dr. Duguid travelled up to the NT and he was, well, he saw firsthand the ongoing effects of colonisation on the Indigenous people, particularly the women and children who were living on the fringes of town camps. He then travelled out to the Musgrave Ranges, which is where Ernabella is, and he saw again the encroachment of white people coming onto Ananu land. And this was primarily in the form of doggers, who were a pretty rough and ready lot. They were the dingo hunters. So they were interacting with the Ananu, buying and selling and trading scalps. So Do Good decided to do good, and he established a mission at Ernabella. Now, I know missionaries don't really get a good rap all the time for their engagement with Indigenous people, but Do Good was, in fact, quite different. The first three points of his charter were that, number one, the local Indigenous language, culture, customs, traditions should be preserved and encouraged. Secondly, that Western whitefella ways, culture, tradition, language should not be imposed on the Indigenous people. And thirdly, anyone coming to work on the mission had to learn to speak Pichinjara. So he was incredibly forward thinking for the 1940s, and it's really thanks to him that language and culture is still so strong across the APY lands. So Pichinjara and Yankinjara are two of only 12 remaining indigenous languages that are spoken in Australia, down from over 250 at the time of colonisation. So one of the first people who came to work at the mission was a woman by the name of Winifred Hilliard and she established a craft room for the Ananu ladies. Now the Ananu had a tradition of hand spinning wallaby fur and human hair to make rope and string and that kind of thing. So it wasn't a huge leap to then be spinning the fleece from the sheep station. So this was then hand loomed into wall hangings and floor rugs and weavings and when she was a very young girl, Imiari and Umaji's auntie and Langaliki's mother, Adi Palku, they all went to the craft room and they all learnt from their mothers and their grandmothers the hand weaving of these rugs and these mats. Now, in 1948, Ernabella Arts was incorporated. So at 76 years, we are in fact the oldest continuously running Indigenous Arts Centre in Australia. Most people think that that title belongs to Papunya, because of course in the 70s they became quite well known for their painting on boards, but in fact the Ernabella artists have been working in craft for a long time before then. And in fact in the 1970s, the Ernabella artists were introduced to what was then considered a new technique of Bartik. Now it might seem a bit passe now, but of course it was all the rage in the 70s. And again, Imiari, Umaji's auntie, Langaliki's mother, 
they were all involved in creating these beautiful Bartik silk screens and silk prints that are housed in collections all around Australia, all around the world, including the British Museum. And then 20 years ago, the ever adaptable artists of Ernabella were introduced to ceramics. And today, Ernabella Arts and Hermansburg Potters are the only two Indigenous art centres that work in this medium. Last year was actually the 20th anniversary of the ceramic studio, a little cross-promotion. We produced a book that tells the history of the ceramic studio from the artist's perspective. So anybody interested in learning more about ceramics, and it has a few of them on sale this evening. So the reason that the art centre has survived and thrived for 76 years, of course, is all down to the dedication, the leadership and the guidance of the artists, of the board. It's a full Ananu board. It's all Indigenous. Imiari and Langaliki are both board members currently. And also, of course, to the skill and the creativity and the talent of the artists themselves. Ernabella Arts is very proud of the fact that it's very intergenerational, that people are coming there, young children, learning from their mothers, learning from their grandmothers, that the familial network is really the basis and the foundation of the art centre. So this evening, for example, Umaji's sister Katrina Jitte, she's exhibiting, Imiari's niece, Juliata Kularu, is here, Langaliki's mother, Adi Paku, who I mentioned, she's exhibiting two of Langaliki's sisters, Lynette and Michelle Lewis, are also exhibiting. Um, Langaliki's brother also works at the Art Centre. And just the other day, we sold one of Langaliki's niece's paintings. She actually painted it during her school holidays because she's only eight years old. So already we've got the new generation of artists coming through. So that's just a bit of a history about the, the art. And if you'd like to come up and talk to the ladies afterwards and have a quiet word, I'm sure they'd be very happy to talk to you a bit more about their own individual paintings.